Hey guys, what's happening? And welcome back to another episode of Shoots with Coops. And today we're talking about a pretty hot topic within the film photography world, and that is Negative Lab Pro. It's this awesome new plugin for Lightroom, which lets you take macro scans of your negatives, stick them in Lightroom, and seamlessly and easily convert them and get really, really accurate colors. Now, color is the big problem when it comes to scanning at home. I've spent so much time uh, with my Epson V700 trying to get accurate color scans. I mean, black and white is easy, and for black and white, absolutely love uh, 35mm and 120 scans I get from the V700. But with color, it can be a bit tricky. And even with programs like uh, Negafix, which Silverfast has um, as you know an add-on, Negafix works really good, but it's never quite the same as getting a professional lab scan done. Until now, with Negative Lab Pro, it's its biggest strength is with color film. I think with black and white, you could get just as good results as dragging the file into Photoshop, inverting it, and doing all your work there. Because um, black and white is its easy, as we know. But with color, it does a fantastic job. Um, what I want to do today, however, is I'm not going to show you how to drive the program so much. I want to give you guys a comparison. So the biggest... Um, well, the most common ways of scanning, obviously, is getting your, your lab to do it with a professional machine home flatbed scanning like I'm doing here. And now with, you know, macro scans uh, with your digital or mirrorless, uh, DSLR or mirrorless camera, I should say, and using this plugin. Um, so I just got some fresh uh, scans back from the lab, um, some medium format scans. So what I want to do is we're going to compare um, the quality of the, the color and the scan from Naritsu to the Epson V700 and then the macro scans using my Fuji X-T3 and a Fuji macro lens. But I do want to say before we dive into the computer guys, if you want to see an in-depth uh, review and tutorial on how to drive Negative Lab Pro, go and check out my good buddy Hashin's channel over at Pushing Film. Hashin has done two videos, one on how to set up a, a workstation to take macro scans and then a dedicated negative lab tutorial and review. So definitely go and check out his videos. And also go over and see the big man, Matt Day himself. Matt has also done two videos on um, his, his work method of how to take macro scans and then a uh, look at Negative Lab Pro. And if you want even more information, jump over to the Negative Lab Pro website. Um, and Nate, the creator, who has kindly sent me a copy of, of the software to show you guys, uh, Nate has done seriously in-depth reviews on and well tutorials on how to drive the program. So definitely go and check out his stuff as well. But without further ado, guys, let's jump into the computer and let's have a look at how good the program works and the results you can get compared to the other most common ways of scanning your negatives. All right, guys, we're inside Lightroom. And I'm just going to quickly show you how to drive Negative Lab Pro. Like I said, go and check out um, Hashin's video and Matt's video on an in-depth look at how to use the program. My main goal today is to give you a comparison um, between the other uh, types of scanning, flatbed scanning and then the professional uh, lab scans. So away we go. You take a white balance reading off the film mask you need to crop your image now remember that it's the same as um, silver fast and nega fix in there as then you, know, you need to crop out the film border otherwise it can trick up uh, the system well trick up the software when you convert it so make sure you've cropped out the film mask um, and then open up negative lab pro and I'm just going to unconvert this because I've already done a conversion, but um, I've been using the basic model um, and it's been working pretty well. You do have the option of Frontier and Naritsu and then obviously black and white if you're doing black and whites, but you know, black and whites are easy. Color is the tricky thing, as you guys know, with scanning at home. Um, and this is where this program does shine. So just using the basic model and I hit convert. And the computer's going to think about it for a second there. Um, and once it's done, still thinking, and away we go. Uh, now, if I undo the settings, because as I said, I've already converted this negative, but I just wanted to show you guys again. Um, the first two options, you've got auto color and auto density. Sometimes they work really well, and then sometimes they don't. But in this case, I found with this image, they worked really really well as you can see it just completely eliminated that blue cast straight away image looks fantastic right off the bat um, all i want to do is maybe drop 
the shadows a bit and bump up the highlights just to maybe make a bit more contrast in the image. Um, now, I could probably eliminate a bit of that, um, bit, maybe it's a bit too warm. Um, so you can, in increments, um, use the color slider in increments, which is really, really good. Um, but then every time I press enter, it drops a negative lab. Anyway, here we go again. So like I brought down the, the yellows just a bit in the mid-tones. Um, but really, really easy to use, great program, and just, you know, off the bat, really, really simple and easy to convert. Now what I want to do is I'm just going to import the other files um, that I've got so I can actually show you guys the comparison. Uh, these three here, let's bring them in. And once Lightroom does its thing, okay, let's just open up the develop module and this one first guys, this beautiful scan is the Noritsu scan I got from my lab here in Perth from Fitzgerald's photo lab. Top end Noritsu machine, does a great job. Scans I get from them, uh, you know, they're always great. Um, never, never an issue. But if we zoom in, you can see there's lots of detail. Um, the colors I feel in this are the most true to life, to be honest. I mean, I'm, it's, you know, thousands of dollars worth of a machine, so you're gonna wanna hope it gives you the best um, results, which I still think it does. Um, the colors are beautiful. Everything looks like it did on the day that I shot this photo. Um, and it is, you know, fantastic colors, great image. I love the Hasselblad. Um, now let's go next to my V700 scan, which you can see it's a, it's a lot flatter. I haven't done any work to this scan here, um, but all I did, you know, the whole point of flatbed scanning is, you know, like we all do, you try and get a bit of a flat scan to work with, with color. Um, I mean, straight away off the bat, I could bump up the contrast a bit here, um, maybe drop the exposure just slightly and I always like to touch of clarity and maybe just boost the shadows a little bit again there but then you can see hey this is a really good scan as well the colors are pretty comparable um, ish um, for a flatbed I'm pretty happy with this to be perfectly honest guys I mean I could even do a um, auto white balance adjustment yep there we go and that's made it look even better so your V700 scans, you know, Epson flatbeds are really good for medium format. Um, and this has done a pretty good job. We've got plenty of detail around, you know, look all the rust spots and the number plate, plenty of detail there. The colors are not as good as the Noritsu scan, but I would just say that it's a different look. It's a little bit of a different look. Neither one is is maybe better or worse than the other. It's That's, you know, photography and the interpretation of the photographer is, you know, the joy of you can decide what you want it to look like. So pretty happy with that one. But now let's go on to the main event, guys. The negative lab scan. Now, the colors on this are definitely much more consistent and comparable, if we look again, to the Noritsu scan here. A bit more contrast in, in the Noritsu one, but then if we go back to the negative lab, the colors are fantastic. I mean, look how good of a job that has done at getting, you know, the look of a professional lab scanner colors. The colors, I think, off uh, the negative lab macro scan here, if I go back to the V700, look, the, the colors off the negative lab are much better, like here, they're much better than the V700 scans. Let's go back to the V700 again. Um, I do think that the only downside is that I think you pull a little bit more detail um, with the flatbed and the Noritsu um, lab scanner. Like if uh, this is the V700 zoomed in, but if we go back to the um, like here, like if we're back now at the negative lab pro, you can just see there's a bit more noise. It's not quite as sharp, even though the X-T3 you know, has that new sensor in it, which is great. I had the ISO at 160 at base, so the cleanest results I can get. Um, but still, it just seems to be that little bit extra detail out of the V700. And then again, if we compare the negative lab pro shot here versus the Noritsu lab scan, the Noritsu lab scan's miles ahead, but that's just, just the case. I've always found that the, the, the Noritsu scans are so sharp and so much detail. Um, and I really think that where the Noritsu lab or any lab scanner for that matter shines is it really does a much better job of reproducing the actual depth of field um, that you get with shooting the bigger medium format negatives but the colors 
they're pretty damn good. You got to say, guys, for being able to do all this at home, the colors are quite fantastic, and I'm really happy with the way this program actually does that. So next, I'm just going to show you another uh, photo here. Uh, let me just bring up uh, my V700 scan here. Okay, so I'm going to open it with the Windows Viewer here. Okay, so this one here is V700 on our right. Now I'm going to bring up the Negative Lab Pro um, macro scan and look at the color comparison here. Um, now, just to you know show you guys, the fact that this is a bit out of focus, that was my fault. Uh, what I've come to understand is there's, it's pretty much, if you can't get a sharp image using a, you know, a, a digital camera and a you know, macro scan set up, it's a user, user fault. You know what I mean? It's not any fault of the camera. You've got to have no camera shake, super steady um, you know, level camera to you know, get the focus correct across the whole of the film plane. But this was user error here, that, you know, the reason why it's not as sharp. But look at the colors, a bit more pastel -y. Um, from the V700, um, and it's sharper only because I screwed up with the negative lab um, image I took here. But it's still really, really nice. Um, I think it's definitely more true to life colors with the using negative lab pro um, from the camera scan than it is with the V700. Everything wasn't as pastel -y here. But for another comparison, if I just go back into my film files here, guys, and I'm going to bring up the Noritsu scan that the lab did. Where are we? RZ Portra 160, here we go. I'm gonna bring up the Noritsu one, just so you can see the colors. Now, there's a lot more contrast, definitely a lot more contrast, but like I said, I could add the contrast in here. This was just a quick one I did as well, to just color was my main goal for this whole video, guys. I just wanted to compare the colors, but if you look, it's a bit darker and a bit more contrast on the right with our Noritsu lab scanner, but the colors are really, really similar. Better color performance than what I'm getting with Silverfast and the Epson V700. Um, so I've got to say, it's definitely another win for Negative Lab Pro. It just does a great job. Obviously, the look is going to be a little bit different um, than a camera. And I think, uh, sorry, looks going to be a bit different with the um, macro scans compared to an actual dedicated scanner. But I don't think neither one is, is better or worse than the other one. It's just kind of a different way to scan in the image. And I'm really pleased with the color results. I mean, it's great. There's really nothing to complain about. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I definitely think that Negative Lab Pro is a great piece of software. Macro scans of film negatives, once you set up your workstation and you get your flow going, it blows flatbeds out of the water the time is it, it you know it's an instant you know usually when you have your exposure set up it's like a second to take that photo compared to a couple minutes to get a scan out of a flatbed it just works so seamlessly and nate has done an amazing job of integrating it to work within lightroom which is you know the most popular photo editor so i'm think he's done a fantastic job i can't fault him a bit but if you're not keen on the macro scans i know one thing nate has said and to keep your eye an eye out for it guys is he is working on integrating flatbeds into the program so tweaking it a little bit so that you can still use your flatbed scanners scan your negatives probably as as like a positive and then convert it that way maybe i'm not sure what he's got in mind but keep an eye out on that for the future uh if you don't have or don't want to invest in a macro setup and you already have a flatbed uh that support could be coming soon so definitely keep an eye out so lastly guys i just want to say because the question everyone probably wants to know is would i buy it because you know i didn't buy it nate did send me a copy um I 100% think this software is worth the money, 100%. If you look at the time you can cut down on your, your scanning time, cut downs, the ease of taking shots with a camera um, of negatives as opposed to scanning, um, you know, the money you'll save in the long haul of paying a lab to scan it, it's worth it. The colors are great. Everything about it is a fantastic program. Um, once you get the whole macro set up working well, it does an amazing results. I still think that if you're going to be doing giant prints, um, you're better off going to the lab and getting, you know, a drum scan done maybe because you're just going to get the highest quality possible that way um, to blow up giant prints. Um, but for what 90% of people use, you know, stuff for these days is posting on Instagram and Facebook and making small prints, probably no bigger than eight by 10. 
um, you know, or 11 by 12 or something. So it's more than capable and more than enough, probably overkill for most of that sort of stuff. So I really don't think you guys will regret picking up a copy of this software. So guys, thanks again for watching another episode of Shoots with Coops. Happy scanning in this instance, and I'll see you in the next video.